Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 345th episode of The Simple sophisticate. Today we are going to go into the home and for the petit plaisir into the kitchen just as we did in episode 341's petit plaisir. I'm sitting here in the office today. It's a few days before Thanksgiving and Norman is napping in his bed. Nell is playing in her bed. (laughs) We just returned home from going on a blustery walk and Well, this is perfect timing because we're settling into our homes and I'm going to be sharing 13 simple ideas for adding luxury to your home. Part deux. Now I say part deux because three years ago we had part un or part one. And it is high time that we dive into the second part of this this subject. But before I get to today's episode, just let me give you a taste of what we're going to be enjoying in this week's Petit Plaisir. I have a recipe that you can easily make in under 15 minutes, and it's a dish directly inspired from a three Michelin star French restaurant, from one of the best restaurants in the world. And it's not a restaurant in Paris. It is a restaurant in a small town, about 35,000 people live there, considered a gastronomical um focal point as it's just outside of the gastronomical capital of the world, Lyon, simply because of the restaurant that created this recipe. But I'm getting ahead of myself and my taste buds are really starting to crave what we're going to make here in about 30 minutes. So I'm going to put that on the back burner for a minute. And I want to talk about adding luxury to our home. There are simple ways we can do this. This concept of luxury at its core is something that brings you comfort, a space, a piece, or an item that brings you ease, calm, and perhaps a sigh of letting go and being able to fully relax and savor the present moment. I shared a list of experiences that exemplify what true luxury is in 2013, and the items on that list are worth exploring as we become more in tune with what luxurious living is. It is important to note that a fundamental element of what constitutes something as being luxurious is the effort and dedicated intention to bring your idea to fruition. In other words, you have taken the time, expended the effort, energy, investment, so that when whatever it is has been reached, whether it's tangible or intangible, You appreciate it and will by no means toss it aside blithely for the next new or better model, version, trend, etc. When it comes to decorating our homes to create luxurious living spaces, while most certainly luxury when it comes to interior design can be expensive, it need not always be that way. And it is important to note that size, for example, a grand large abode, doesn't guarantee the space will be luxurious if the details 
are not tended to well. To walk into a luxurious space, small or large in scale, is only part of being truly luxurious. It is when you engage with the space, live in it, sit down in the chairs, sleep in the beds, pour yourself a hot cuppa, that you then discover whether or not the home is truly luxurious. In today's episode, I want to tend to those simple ideas that when you tend to them can elevate the luxury in a room immediately upon a guest or yourself living in that space. As I mentioned, three years ago, I began this series with a post sharing 10 simple, significant decor ideas to add luxurious touches to the home. And it was inspired by interior designer Kathy Kincaid's new book at the time, The Well-Adorned Home. And as you will discover in today's list, while the simple touches may be investment decisions, they significantly elevate the luxurious presence of the room, beckoning the inhabitants to relax and stay a while. And I've linked to part one or part un on today's show notes. That was episode 260, if you want to listen to that episode, where we detail those 10 significant decor ideas that add luxurious touches to the home. Now, in today's episode, part two of this series, I am sharing 13 ideas that, while simple, are also quite affordable and don't require a contractor or even the expert eye of an interior designer, all except number 11. So 12 of the 13 items you can do today or when you want to without having to pay someone else to do something for you. There is something almost impossible to describe with words, but felt by our nervous system when we step into a decorated space that to our eye is luxurious as well as to our other senses immediately there is a noticeable decrease in our stress levels. Dopamine may even be released and we let our guard down and sigh. Exhaling a deep breath as though we are home. We are safe, comforted. We have found a place to unwind and be rejuvenated. I've included a link to a post I wrote a handful of years ago that shares a long list of ideas of how to create a sanctuary for all of your senses. And that is included in today's post if you want to dive more specifically into that concept. So now let's take a look at the list of 13 simple ideas for adding luxury to your home. Number one, start where you sleep. Linen sheets. Sheets that breathe that feel good on your skin, that enable your body to remain at a proper body temperature to hold you in a deep sleep, whether it is summer or winter, say hello to linen sheets procured from flax from Belgium or northern France. Up front, the price is a bit steeper than cotton sheets, but even luxurious cotton sheets are equivalent to what you might pay for linen sheets, sometimes even more. But if the linen sheets are made well, they will last for decades, and I dare say lifetimes, because of the material that is linen. It is stronger, but the beautiful part is it also is very soft on the skin. I wrote a detailed post about this in 2018, the history of linen. I, had, I take pictures of a linen field in northern France and walk you through all that you might be wondering about when it comes to linen. And I know I'm probably a broken record for many of you who know this podcast well or the blog, as I'm regularly and consistently recommending linen sheets. In fact, my mom recently um, brought linen sheets into her her life, and she is loving it. And it's taken a few years for me to convince her to give it a try, but um, she's enjoying them now <laughs> and even bought a second set. So These are sheets that I sleep on ever since 2018. I have always slept on linen sheets all year round and I get the best sleep. So that's number one, add quality sheets to your bed and make them linen. Two, proper teacups and saucers or beautiful coffee mugs. Sitting down and slowing down is often not part of the American lexicon of a good life especially if you sit down and enjoy a cup of tea. That's just not a common practice in the States. And there's all sorts of theories as to why that is and and whatnot. But I wholeheartedly disagree with it not being part of a good life. A good life involves sitting down and savoring and being present and enjoying. And tea for me, and I know a lot of you, 
or a really good cup of coffee is a wonderful way to do just that. And especially so when you use fine china, it is the quality of the coffee mug or the teacups and saucer that encourages you to slow down and savor. But as it pertains to adding a touch of luxury to your home because a cup of beckons to be sipped and savored, when it is using a beautiful piece of tableware, we see for ourselves the power of luxury to create more comfort in our lives. Even for your morning cup of coffee, welcome into your regular use of teacups and mugs, quality and beautiful pieces. Purchase a tray that fits your decor, whether it's small or large, and use it even if, as it is often for me, just for you. When, we, when I come to the office every single morning, it's after we've gone for our walk and the, the pups already have a routine. Um, my little one already <laughs> has her routine with us. I have dog treats in uh, a glass um, can- canister on my desk and I make my pot of tea and put it on this round brass um, tray that fits just perfectly in this little tiny tea, tea tray or tea table next to my desk. And as soon as they see that tray, as soon as I've poured the tea kettle or the teapot, and um, I have everything ready to go. They dance with me all the way to the office. And it is the, the gathering of the goodies, so to speak, on the tray, the presentation of this beautiful cup and saucer that whether it's in my own company, which I thoroughly enjoy, or with others, it says I care. And it does bring comfort because, again, it slows you down and you, in, you savor what you have made for yourself all the more because you're being invited to slow down. So that's number two. Invest in proper teacups and saucers or beautiful coffee mugs. Number three, high quality bars of soap for the guest bathroom and your own bathroom. Tending to all of our senses in our homes, as shared in detail in a post I wrote um, a couple years ago, as I mentioned earlier in our episode today, it's all linked on the show notes if you want to check that out, can deepen how luxurious our home feels. High quality bars of soap set next to the sink on a delicate small bone china plate creates not only a luxurious visual, but adds a subtle scent that freshens the room and serves the function of cleansing, but not drying out the hands when washed. During this past year's annual French week, and actually it was the Petit Plaisir for episode 321, one of the giveaways was the classic Marseille Cubes of soap that are time tested for a reason. The only soap now that I use in my bathrooms for their sustainability, style, and moisturizing and cleansing qualities are these traditional Savon de Marseille soaps. And they're very inexpensive. We're talking just a couple of euros. I share all the details about them in the two posts that I just mentioned, and I will link to them on the show notes. But again, They're beautiful, but they are also functional. They offer a a lovely scent, but they're not too overpowering. Um, And that's the little touches we can add to our living space. So number three, find and add high quality bars of soap for the guest bathroom and your own. Number four, say yes to monogramming. While you definitely don't want to go overboard on this one, when thoughtfully placed in more intimate rooms or spaces in the home or even on clothing and, and handbags, monogramming elevates the intentionality of that room, of that vignette, and it communicates a space that is not accidentally thrown together and instead conveys an ownership and desire to stay a while. Whether you choose to monogram your pillow shams in the primary bedroom, a robe, your tote, stationery, notebooks, luggage, really anything can be monogrammed. Make sure it is necessary and not garish, and then this subtle detail will reveal a touch of luxury. So number four is say yes to monogramming. Number five, adorn vignettes with candlesticks. During a recent power outage that left us in the dark for over two hours this in one evening, this just a couple of weeks ago, I became ever more appreciative of my candle cupboard and the many candles that I have stocked in there. As well, I had candlesticks and candle holders. And when the power did return, I made a note to more thoughtfully add candlesticks to my decor. 
I had a few, but I want to make sure to include at least either a candlestick or a candle holder in each room that I would want to sit in or need to sit in if the lights go out. Not wanting them to look plopped down into the decor, I did my best to incorporate them, the ones that I had, into a vignette, either on a side table or a tray or on top of a table or mantle. Now, having this retro detail added to your space means you will now be on a treasure hunt for candlesticks that work with your decor. Have fun searching, and in time, you will have both a detail that is function and form to elevate the luxury of your home. And I shopped, um, actually, there was one candlestick that popped up while I was... Um, while I was shopping this week online, it's from Anna and Nina. It's an ocean glass candlestick. So it has a beautiful, soft kind of glass um, appearance to it. And it's on sale. At te- it's fewer than $15. So if you want to check that out. But there are so many places you can find them. Like I said, it's a treasure hunt. So have fun searching. That's number five. Adorn vignettes with candlesticks. Six. Speaking of candles, <laughs> add candles with good scents. In my guest room, which I often keep the door shut at the moment because I'm, I'm giving or leaving Nell fewer options of where to explore during her puppy, puppy days, I have on the dresser a tray and the vignette that's composed on the tray and on the top of this dresser includes a French candle from a provincial candle company, Rose et Merou, an item that was actually included in one of Sharon Santoni's My Stylish French, French Boxes earlier this year. And as I had recently had company this fall, the candle was a light for a couple of hours. And now each time that I open the door, the beautiful, gentle scent greets me and I cannot help but smile. The key is to find scents from a quality candle maker. My predilection is for French candles and that will not surprise you. And in fact, I wrote a post um, that shares nine of my favorite French candles, although this list is now longer and I need to update it to add Trudon candles. But I recently did update it up until um, a couple months ago. And so I'm sharing nine favorite French candles and I link to all of them, share pictures of them in my home and why I love them. So if you do want some French candles, high quality, um, all different price points, by the way, all different price points, check that post out. And I've linked to it in the show notes today. But having candles, again, appeals to your senses, especially when they're the holder of the of the wax is beautiful as well. Not a label that, you know, screams a brand. I like to have some kind of artistry or simplicity to it. Depends on the vignette I'm putting it in. Um, and there are a lot of beautiful options on, for all those candles that I shared um, in that post. So that's number six. Add candles with good scents. Number seven, And don't forget the match strikers. (laughs) A handful of years ago, I wrote a detailed post about the classic. It's a small little detail, but it is just an essential one, more so in the past than today. But if you're going to have candles in your house or anything that you need to light, a match striker is the item to have on hand. And while there are modern ones that are made today, if you can snag a vintage match striker, you are in for a special treat. While they do tend to be more pricey, they are worth it. Keeping the necessity of the matches handy is what is the first part of having a match striker. But it also looks, and I'm going to use a pun here, it looks striking. It's a beautiful piece of art in a small, delicate way. And it complements the space rather than looking out of place. I have three of them in my house right now, and I'm always looking for more, like I said, the vintage ones are more expensive, so um, I don't have a vintage one, but I would love to welcome one or two of those into my home because I do have candles in quite a few rooms, and um, the, the match striker, it looks like it should be there, but it doesn't take the spotlight, and I've linked to that post so you can check it out and learn more. That's number seven. Don't forget the match strikers. Number eight, choose a large piece of framed art rather than many small pieces. While it often takes time to first know what piece of art you want to place on an empty wall or generally know what you want to place there, saving up for a -a one-of-a-kind piece of art that is large-scale takes time. However, if you can make this purchase, it will elevate the space immediately, look less cluttered, more intentional, and immediately draw the eye for all the right reasons. One of the reasons that I like to wallpaper 
is because the wall doesn't scream to have something placed on it. And I actually am less likely to put a lot of things on my walls because of my wallpaper and be really selective about the artwork or whatever it is I put up on, on the wall. And in fact, in my office now, because I've wallpapered this room and I have had framed pieces of, of art um, that I love, but I have multiple ones on one of my walls. I've significantly reduced it over the years. But as I'm trying to finish my office, uh, decorating my office, I've realized I don't want, right now I'm looking at four frame pieces right now, I don't want four frame pieces. I want one large piece, and then the wallpaper works its magic. And that one piece is going to draw the eye immediately and not have multiple pieces vying for your attention. But again, it has to be the piece that you know works there and will work there for a long time because you love it and there's something special about it. So this takes time. So that's number eight. Choose a large piece of framed art rather than many small pieces. Number nine, invest in what you touch. Textures for pillows, throws, upholstered furniture that you sit in regularly. Purchase well, not only for aesthetics, but for your sense of touch as well. By mixing and matching textures of velvet pillow placed in a wooden chair, silk with wool, what you touch, if it brings a feeling of awe, like you're relaxing, you're like, oh, that adds luxury. That's what you want. So that's number nine. Invest in what you touch. Ten, create vignettes. And at the same time, be sure to strike a balance, the right balance. A vignette can be found anywhere in your home. However, make sure where you choose to create one, the items you've chosen fit the space, fit the stories that you're trying to tell, fit the energy and the the theme, so to speak, that you're trying to create in that space. Whether it's on a console table or on an upholstered ottoman, a side tea table or a spare bookshelf, what you create, what you organize, what you layer needs to look intentional and not just a bunch of items randomly placed together, almost as though it's a bunch of clutter. With that said, it doesn't need to be super, super tidy. It might look a bit askew. They might not all be aligned. This is up to you and your style. But again, it's all intentional, and it just looks right. A handful of years ago, I wrote a detailed post sharing eight details to tend to when styling a tray that serves as a vignette. I would encourage you to take those same principles. So I've linked this post on today's show notes. Take those same eight principles and apply them to any place you have a vignette. It may not involve a tray. I use a tray because often that's how you kind of frame your vignette. Um, You put the items on a tray and then maybe you sit a framed photo or piece of art or a couple pieces of art behind it. But it doesn't need to be a tray. But I think these eight tips will give you some ideas. In fact, interior designer David Jimenez artfully composes vignettes as showcased in the new decor book, Parisian by Design. And I highly recommend you checking that out. Um, And British interior designers Rita Koenig and Ben Pentreth are experts at this creating of vignettes and layering as well. And I am excited to say, with the mention of David Jimenez, that be sure to tune in to episode 346, which will be, which will be Wednesday, December 7th. So in two weeks time, he is going to be a guest on this show. And we're going to talk about his new book, Parisian by Design. We're going to talk about all things France and his life in France, decor and how he decorates. And I think you're genuinely going to enjoy him. He is following his passion and marrying it with helping people live in spaces they love and he's going to show you how to do that so that's episode 346 and again he's an expert at this (laughs) so going through that book you see all these different ways he's created vignettes it's a beautiful book so that's number 10 create vignettes and but strike the right balance number 11 add fresh flowers in an arty vase and I put arty in quotes but whatever you that catches your eye, that's not just glass or plain glass, that's not just whatever is too plain to your eye, I want you to consider being just as intentional with the vases you choose as the flowers. 
I will share that my first stage of welcoming flowers into my house or my homes was simply to use any vase I could find and afford. I mean, I just didn't have many. I didn't have any options, but I was just glad that I could afford flowers. And when I could start affording fresh flowers in my home, I, that was a big luxury. So start there. That's huge. And that was for many, many years. I just used the vases I had, hand-me-downs, garage sale finds, things like that. And all I was using were glass and white vases. And that was absolutely fine. Gradually, over many years, I have begun to intentionally go treasure hunting for beautiful vases that fit the type of flowers I tend to have available, either from my garden or from the local Trader Joe's. And it is in the pairing of these fresh blooms with an eye-catching vase that creates a beautiful visual that elevates the entire space or focal area. I've included a picture of a recent vase that I found. I found it on One King's Lane. It's very narrow um, uh, and wide. So it's like a, I think it's like 11 inches wide, but only two inches um, in depth. And then the, the actual space where you would put the flower stems is pretty narrow, but it's very bottom heavy. So it stays put. And I really like it because it itself catches your eye and then the flowers just add to it. And this is the thing when you don't have fresh flowers, your vase can still be there and be beautiful. And you can keep that wherever you have it. Maybe you have it in a vignette, maybe you have it in the middle of the table, um, beside your bed, wherever, and it's still quite beautiful. So that's number 11, fresh flowers in an arty vase. Number 12, custom window treatments. Lose those bland blinds. As soon as you begin to remove the blinds that while providing the necessary privacy don't come with a lot of style and begin to add what suits your taste, you will immediately feel more comfortable and more relaxed in your home. This is the one item on today's list that does require working with an expert, unless you are an interior designer. An interior designer will have access to collections of fabric that can only be purchased wholesale or sold to tradespeople and are not available directly to the public. As well, and more importantly, when you customize your curtains, they will fit like a glove and complement the space that is yours and uniquely so. I recently had two spaces done with custom curtains, my reading nook and my dining room, and I'll provide a link to my reading nook. You do need to become a top tier member to tour these spaces, the before, the after, all the objectives that I was trying to achieve, um, as well as all the sourcing links. But I do, these are lengthy posts. I try to be as helpful and as informative and share all the details so that you too can go and create with the knowledge of knowing how to do it well, um, something that you will love and it will, while being an investment, be something that you're glad you made the investment. Um, so that, this, that's the only item where you'll want to work with someone who knows this business. Um, I've been grateful to be working with Veronique, but um, if you can find someone who knows how to do this, it is, your house will just, again, more size of, 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 of gratefulness and, and calm and relaxing will be taking place. The last item on our list is number 13, and it is not necessarily to add anything at all. It is simply to declutter and to make sure that you are layering with intention. We talked a little bit about layering when we were talking about creating vignettes, but I want to talk more in detail about the importance of decluttering. Perhaps the most simply luxurious touch you can add to your home is to declutter. The English cottages and country homes that I tend to gravitate toward have mastered this art of layering their homes with items that to maybe the untrained eye would look cluttered. But when you look closely, you realize everything is intentional, complimentary, and tells a story of some sort that fits that space. As I continue to be a student of this aesthetic approach, it is something that, that makes me feel right at home. I'm learning that the place to begin is to start with bare shelves, walls, whatever the space is. Even if you're going to keep most of the items, just take it all down and look at a clean slate. Begin then gradually adding to them, living with each item that's new before you add a bunch more or one more and pairing or grouping what you have so far before you add more so that you know what you are looking for and you feel confident as to which treasure would fit the space best. This is a journey that does take time and as much as it would be wonderful to 
you know, say, okay, I'm going to go shopping for everything right now or on this one trip or hire someone to do it. Boom, boom. If it's not yours, if there's not a story or an attachment to it in some way, it doesn't speak to you. It's not going to be something that will create that hug when you walk in the room. And we really have to be careful because I, I have been guilty of this in the past too. You put too much of yourself in a vignette or on a shelf or, or in a room and it's, it's um, almost claustrophobic. So that's why go slow and see how you feel with each new item you add or each new grouping you come up with. And then maybe you'll take one of the items away from the grouping and keep the others. Uh, you know, you'll just take the time to feel your way through this process. So number 13 is declutter and layer with intention. Decluttering can be quite cathartic and then the enjoyment is intensified even more when you go on the treasure hunts to find those pieces that you will gradually add to your space that becomes your unique sanctuary. Slowly but steadily, our homes become our sanctuaries and that is the fun of it as well. Traveling along this journey of decorating your home. Having recently reflected on old photographs prior to my home, um, Le Papillon, um, and the customization that's been going through the last two and a half years, it has been a delight to see the transformation and remember what it felt like in that space that was not customized and how much more at home and comforted I feel in the space now. But it will take time. It does take time and did take time. <laughs> Along the way, gradually adding the above simply luxurious touches can make powerfully positive changes. I do hope you enjoy the journey of adorning your home with these touches of luxury. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you can find the show notes for this entire list and all the links I mentioned at the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 345. Now I have two sponsors I want to introduce you to, and then I will meet you in the kitchen to cook a dish that will knock your socks off. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll see you in the kitchen. The holidays are here and Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what you want. For the gardener, I found a beautiful hand-painted porcelain hummingbird feeder. And it's one of those things that it doesn't look like what it is, but then you look closely and it's just a piece of art that gets to also serve a really beautiful function out in your garden. For the dog lover in your life, there is a customizable pedigree poem tote bag for whatever your preferred pup breed may be. I'm looking at one that has a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel on it. There's also one with a Labrador and another one with a Golden Retriever. And what it does is it spells out their name and then next to each of the letter of Golden and Retriever, it lists a playful and loving characteristic about this breed. Something that no doubt you will appreciate if you have such a pup. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out. And also be ensured that you have a very unique gift. Uncommon Goods look for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. From art and jewelry to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. And they've donated more than $2.5 million to date. As a simple, sophisticate listener, you will receive 15% off your next gift when you go to uncommongoods.com slash sophisticate. That's uncommongoods.com slash sophisticate for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. The holiday season is around the corner. Well, it's actually upon us, isn't it? And with it comes gift giving, lots of great food, and of course, 
holiday portraits. <laughs> I have not always been a fan of taking photos, especially when they're poised, because inevitably something doesn't look right. And while you can't control other aspects of the holiday, you can make sure you feel confident and camera ready for your photos. Oh, how I wish apostrophe would have been around when I was in high school. Oh, that is why I'm excited to partner with apostrophe. Apostrophe's goal is to help you feel confident in your own skin. Whether you're dealing with breakouts, signs of aging, or acne scarring, apostrophe will help you love the skin you're in. Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment or an anti-aging regimen for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne and improve the reduction of lines. Simply fill out an online consultation about your skin goals and medical history. Then snap a few selfies and a board certified dermatologist will create your initial customized treatment plan. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne and even back and chest. Treat breakouts from head to toe. I had the opportunity to go through this process and taking the pictures was as simple as taking them with my phone and uploading them, but they actually have a camera on their website so that you can click quickly just with the press of a button on your keyboard, take pictures when you're sitting in front of your computer screen. It is that simple. Within 24 hours, I had a prescription regimen for my anti-aging approach, and I have been using the retinol they sent me with great positive effect more radiant skin, reduction of fine lines. I cannot tell you the simplicity, but also the high quality of results. As a simple, sophisticated listener, we have a special deal for you. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash sophisticate. When you use our code sophisticate, that's a savings of $15. This code is only available to the simple sophisticate listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash sophisticate and click get started. Then use the code sophisticate at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. <music> Right, so we are in the kitchen. We got our pan and we have a saucepan. So we have a skillet and a saucepan. Puppies are here. Nell is um, in front of the stove. She just yawned. Norman is right there by the kitchen garden door and they are going to supervise and make sure it's all made well. What are we making for this week's Petit Plaisir? We are making a fabulously simple recipe that is specially served at a three Michelin star restaurant in Rouen, France, which is northwest of Lyon, a small town, about 35,000 people. Well, what is it, Shannon? Get to it. We are making the scallop de salmon à l'ozen, which is salmon with creamy sorrel. And le scallop is simply meaning a cutlet of salmon. So la scallop de salmon à l'ozen, a salmon cutlet with creamy sorrel. Now you may be asking, what is sorrel? Now this is uh, an herb from the garden that I've talked about many times on my cooking show, The Simply Luxurious Kitchen. It is not an herb that you find in grocery stores here in the States. It is not one you can find in nurseries um, grown as a small plant. You really need to go buy the seeds and sow it. And so I've sowed it in my garden and it grows year round. It weathers the winters well. In fact, I was able to just go outside and harvest it from my garden. Now the two pups are laying by the door and Nell is laying on Norman's feet. So and we're gonna get started with this. Um, what you need for your salmon, we're gonna make enough for two people. And the first thing you wanna do is get rid of the skin on the salmon. So take off the skin and then if there are bones, take the bones out. With the sharpest knife you can get if you don't have a proper fish uh, skin removal knife. But a good sharp knife, chef's knife, will get it. And we're almost there. We almost got it. Now this restaurant has basically brought the, the name of the town, Rouen, uh, to the gastronomical world. Um, they have held the Michelin stars since the late 1960s. 
and it is the son of one of the two men because it was a it was two brothers that opened the restaurant Trois Gros um, in the 1950s and ever since it has been one of the best restaurants in the world you can eat at we are going to make this dish and you're going to see how simple it really can be and it all comes down to quality ingredients and the flavor profile is just wonderful in fact we made um, on the, see, the third season of the Simply Luxurious Life Kitchen, I made a sorrel chicken recipe that is very similar to this dish, except for this time we're using salmon and a little bit of vermouth, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's get the skin off. Right now, <laughs> she's chewing on her toy now underneath my feet. And Norman's just keeping an eye on me Stand right where he's been the entire time. Voila. Okay. So now what you want to do with the salmon is you want some wax paper. Um, you're not necessarily tenderizing it. Salmon is tender enough as it is. But if you have, as often as the case, um, salmon with a really thick middle, and then a narrower sides. You want everything to be of equal thickness so that it cooks evenly throughout because you're not gonna cook this very long on the skillet. So let me grab my mallet, flat side. And you, if you have a mallet that's actually very wide, um, that can almost cover the whole salmon, then that is ideal. But um, if you don't, just use your regular mallet, soft side and gently, <laughs> gently, is that gentle enough, you two? Kind of tenderize it, but really you're just trying to get even thickness everywhere. Now, if you have a really thick piece of salmon, slice it in half horizontally, and that's where you can get um, your two servings, just from one thick filet. Okay, now what we wanna do season the salmon and you want to get some salt some flaky sea salt and here is the trick for cooking with fish you want white ground pepper yes white not black ground pepper because as was taught to me by the Michel uh, Gros <laughs> when I watched him make this recipe white pepper is for fish black pepper are for your meats such as pork and beef so always get some white pepper on hand. Okay, now, now I'm adding a little bit of flaky sea salt. My favorite is Malden flaky sea salt from England. Love it. Okay, so set that aside for a second. It's all ready to go. And now what we do is make the sauce. And I'm going to on medium to medium high heat. Beautiful. While the pan's heating up, I'm going to chop a shallot. This is really a recipe that incorporates the basic fundamentals of making a sauce whenever you're making a protein. Um, in this case, we're, we're not using the renderings, but we're starting with our, with our allium in the sense of the shallot. We are then going to deglaze reduce and then add the flavor of the fat. There we go. Beautiful. I love shallots. They have such a gentle onion flavor. Subtle sweetness. Yum. So. And the finer you can get this, the better to make that sauce so very delicate. Speaking of luxury today on today's episode. Luxury in this dish Yes, it's the ingredients, but it's also in the presentation. You can make this very fancy without doing anything complicated, which is fabulous. All right, that's finely chopped. Now the wine that we're gonna use, you want either white wine that is dry, such as Chablis or Sancerre, or Chardonnay would be an easy go-to. Now, one way to up this dish a little bit is to get some vermouth. Moliprat 
is a well-known and trusted vermouth from France. And we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of that. You will also need, or don't need, another way to add more flavor is to have fish stock. Homemade is obviously best. I do not have homemade fish stock. And in fact, I don't have fish stock. So I'm not gonna use it. And that's actually not needed. And the original recipe only calls for a dry white wine and he used Sincere. So I have some Chardonnay here. I have some Noli Pro, which is the vermouth from France. And that's all I'm going to use. Then you're going to want to find some either creme fraiche or heavy cream. Before I start the sauce, I want to um, prepare the sorrel. Now, if you've never used sorrel before, it looks a little bit like a spinach leaf. Okay, very long oblong uh, leaves. And I never have found sorrel regularly in my market and not sold at our farmer's market. And I've never seen it as a plant in a nursery. I have the seeds though, and then 2020, I sowed my own seeds and I have now have, now I have sorrel year round in my garden and um, it comes back year after year. I, you only have to sow it once. For four bucks, I had hundreds of seeds and now I have two big plants and it's fantastic. It, it's a flavor that's, it's a deep citrus lemony flavor, but it's more than just a lemon. I have tried to substitute lemon when I didn't have sorrel and while it was okay, the sorrel itself is just too special to, to not include. So I highly recommend if there's only one herb that you grow in America because we don't have it readily available, maybe you do, and that's fantastic, that's woohoo, um, is to grow your own sorrel. Um, you will just love this sauce. Okay, prepare the leaves. All you have to do to prepare the leaves is to remove the stem. And how you remove the stem is simple. You don't need scissors or chop it or anything. Um, Fold down the sides of the leaf on either side of the stem and then take the long end of the thick part of the stem and just pull back to the tip of the leaf. Boom, just like that. Same thing you would do to spinach. Okay, so the sorrel is done and ready to go. The pan is warm, medium to medium high heat, and we're going to start the sauce. Boop, there we go. The wine is ready to add to the sauce and will also become the pairing for the meal. Vermouth is ready now. Dogs went outside. <laughs> there you go. One through the dog door. Two through the dog door. Okay, now to make the sauce. You only need a tablespoon of finely chopped shallots. You don't need any olive oil. Nothing goes in the pan except the shallots, the Chardonnay or the dry white wine, since Sarah should be the vermouth if you have it, and the fish sauce. That is it. We're gonna reduce this wine down, so here we go. Shallots going in. Six tablespoons of the white wine. Three, two, three, four, five, six. That smells so good. Now I'm gonna do one to two tablespoons of vermouth. Stir that gently. Just reduce it so the wine or the liquid is reduced by about a third. That's why you want medium to medium high heat. And this is where you're waiting um, just for that to happen. This is where you want to figure out, am I gonna use creme fraiche or am I gonna use heavy whipping cream? And that is completely up to you. Following salmon medium heat. You're going to use a dry pan. So you don't have any butter or olive oil for the salmon. You're going to use an entirely dry pan. And that's going to heat up while I finish the sauce. Okay, the wine is reduced by a third. Now I'm going to add three-fourths cup either heavy cream or creme fraiche. I am going to use creme fraiche. Yum. So that's in there. i got my dollops. Now, this will immediately cool down the sauce because it is a dairy product and it's cold. It's coming from the fridge, probably. Um, that's okay. That's going to be expected. Just be patient. Stick with it. Um, it'll take about five minutes. You want to bring it back so it's warm and to medium heat and slightly thicken. Thickens the sauce and you can hold your wooden spoon 
and see a more opaque sauce covering that wooden spoon. Yum, I can just smell that. Yummy, yummy, yummy. You wanna come in, Norman? Come on in, handsome. There you go. You just wanna come in? You stay, okay. Oh, there she comes. Both pups are back now. They said hi to the yard and said hello to their toys in the neighborhood. Getting our plate ready to plate it because it's not gonna take much longer. Okay, the sauce is looking beautiful. What I wanna add is one tablespoon of butter, unsalted, preferably French or high quality butter, so like a high a butter fat count. Then let that butter melt in, yum. Get that white pepper that we put on top of the salmon and grab a half of a lemon. Okay. Now I'm gonna add a little of the pepper, white pepper. Perfect. Flaky sea salt. And don't be um don't be stingy with the sea salt. Give it one good teaspoon if you want. If you're doing smaller portions, do less than that. But taste it as you go and you'll know exactly um, how much you want to add. Now we're gonna add lemon juice. About a tablespoon. Oh, this is gonna be a delicious sauce. The smell in here is fresh, but also warm at the same time. We have everything in our sauce that we are adding, except for the sorrel. And here we go, sorrel's going in. And it's beautiful and bright green right now, but it's gonna reduce and just melt into the sauce. And it's gonna turn a slight soft brown, not like cooked brown, but it just, well, this almost feels like it dissolves into it. And that's, what you want. And this will just take about one to two minutes once you put the sorrel in. There it goes. It's already turning into the brown color from green. And that's when you know, when it turns all, all of them turn to brown, that's when you know your sauce is ready. And this is how you bring freshness in from your own garden. This is where you find those simple but powerfully satiating flavor uh, layers of flair, flavor to add to your meals. And that's something we talk about in every episode of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. We just um, wrapped up season five in October. If you wanna check out all those videos, be sure to do so. Now the sauce is done. We are now gonna cook our salmon. And the pan is hot. Now you're gonna to wanna to be here the whole time because it cooks very quickly. Put the, remember this is a dry pan, medium heat. Put the seasoned side down first. And it's only gonna cook for about a minute. Yes, a minute. Remember you tenderized it, there's not a lot of thickness there. And while it's cooking on that side, season this side with more white pepper and flaky sea salt. Voila, voila, voila. It smells good, doesn't it, you two? I'm gonna flip it to the second side. Get my fish spatula here. There we go, nice and flip. Whoop, there you go, perfect. While the second side is cooking, and that won't take more than 30 seconds, I'm gonna plate up the sauce. Put it on the base of a round plate. Fill the entire bottom, but it's just a nice thin layer. There we go. And if your salmon is not entirely cooked after this last 30 seconds, that means you did it exactly right. Putting it right in the middle, just like that. Oh, yeah. And I take a little bit more of the leftover sauce and put that over the top. And you have, and you have the scallop de salmon a lo sal or salmon cutlet with creamy sorrel. In a matter of 15, 20 minutes, you just made a three-star Michelin restaurant worthy dish. Salmon with creamy sorrel. I do hope you enjoy.
Now I'm going to go try a bite. <laughs> Thank you for stepping into the kitchen with me again today for this week's Petit Plaisir. You can find the entire recipe complete with pictures on the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash PP345. That stands for Petit Plaisir 345. You can easily print out the recipe and keep it for when you want a decadent and luxurious dinner that can be made in fewer than 15 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, as I shared in the middle of today's episode, the next episode of the show is going to be the first Monday of December, as always, which is the 7th of December. And I have a special guest joining me interior designer, an American living the dream in Paris, David Jimenez, will join me to talk about the new book, Parisian by Design, Interiors by David Jimenez. And yep, you are remembering correctly, this book was chosen as a petit plaisir for episode 344 just a couple of weeks ago. For good reason, I love this book. And so when I read it, I then reached out to him and invited him on the show. And while he's in the middle of his book tour here in the States, he graciously said yes, and I cannot wait for you to listen to our conversation. So mark your calendars, Wednesday, December 7th, we'll chat all things French decor and following your dreams and trusting your voice. All right, before I wrap up, I wanted to say a big thank you to a longtime listener, Alyssa Joy. She wrote a review titled Favorite Podcast Five Stars. This review is long overdue. I've discovered Shannon's podcast a few years ago and have been a huge fan. I'm inspired by her content and look forward to each episode. Hers is the only podcast I consistently listen to. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Alyssa, to you, thank you, thank you. I sincerely appreciate your time and interest over the years and for taking the time to write this very lovely and kind review. If you too enjoy this show, please do take a moment to either rank or a few more minutes to write a review. It is greatly appreciated and lets potential new listeners discover what this show is all about. Wishing you a wonderful start to the holiday season. And if you are celebrating Thanksgiving, have a wonderful and delicious Thanksgiving tomorrow. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, pick up my new book, which became both a bestseller and number one new release in France Travel, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening. My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate the Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog such as the monthly A Couple Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee, and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Nables. Thank you for tuning in. Bonjour.